Hi everybody, Mike Reese here for Martial Arts Chat. Today I have three parts I'm going to do. And uh, the reason why I'm going to do these three parts is because um, I was asked to do Bartitsu on Thursday and my video did not load up, and which sucked. Um, and then I had a friend message me about another system that he wanted me to look at and kind of give a, you know, kind of give a review about. And then I wanted to also give a shout out to a friend of mine who has been nothing but generous. Just the quality of the person that he is, is what makes me want to do this for him. So, uh, the first one I'm going to do is for Eric Harris and that's for Bartitsu. Bartitsu is a, a system that was designed by E.W. Barton. This guy, uh, th this system is like kind of got rekindled as far as people wanting to know about it, people wanting to know more about it, um, because of the Sherlock Holmes movies, because they were saying, oh, hey, you know, look what they did, look at look at what he's supposed to do, what did Sherlock Holmes know how to fight, da 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 and it's, it's only referenced once in the, in the novels, and it was called Baritsu, but it really was meaning was Bartitsu, and the author didn't even know anything about Bartitsu. And he just was like throwing something random in there uh, for uh, Sherlock Holmes to know because it was a, it fit about the time era that he was in that he would know this stuff. So it kind of fit. Um, but for anybody's knowledge though, what they showed in uh, the Sherlock Holmes movies, I think I've said this before, it wasn't, um, it wasn't Bartitsu, it was... Wang Chung, just so people understand. But the Bartitsu cell itself is actually very good. It's actually, uh, you know, I don't know. I would probably want to study it more. I probably would want to get in and actually see how it worked a little more for myself before I made any, like, judgment calls of whether it's bad or not. Because you got to remember, this it died out. It, like, it vanished. And the guy basically went broke. He left this world broke, and uh, I mean, he wrote a self-defense book. He was teaching people self-defense, and it was doing well for him. And then it went, and then it just totally lost out, um, which was unfortunate because he blended a lot of arts. And this is back way before Bruce Lee, way before. Yeah, that's right. People were doing this this mentality. I think this is one thing that really makes me happy about this is the mentality of someone who just wants good self-defense someone who just wants to he doesn't care about anything else he doesn't care about the 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 lineage he doesn't care about the the uh, masters on the wall he doesn't care about any of that he learned good great stuff from good from really good quality instructors and then put it together for himself and how to teach other people how to fight within the parameters of the time that they were living in he made it now that's probably why it died out because it just suddenly just went and you know you didn't mod when you don't evolve your art when you don't ever go anywhere and it stays stagnant you just die out you, you just don't go anywhere so but he had stick fighting which was it's called vigny stick fighting but it's like more of a fencing style uh, and i think he also he learned lacane because lacane's a part of savat and he also has savat and uh, boxing mixed into the style plus judo and jujitsu so he's got kicks, he's got punches, he's got elbows, he's got throws, he's got, uh, so he's got ground game, he's got uh, stick fighting, so he has weapon knowledge. And what's interesting is he also took the weapons knowledge and applied it to, um, like, the stuff that they would have, snuff boxes, uh, parasols, hats, like the top hats and, you know, all that kind of stuff, Par you know, hats, um, umbrellas, walking canes, because, you know, gentlemen back then had walking canes and stuff like that, you know, kind of like pimps do now, you know, with big hats and, and canes. I know, it's weird to have that kind of, where I went with that. I know, it's all right. But um, there's a lot of great history behind it, and it's kind of interesting for me to see it, and I, like reading up on it, it was kind of like, wow, there's a lot to this, and it's very intricate because there's a lot of history behind it. Um... And interestingly enough, you know, I think it's great because he used styles that a lot of people are like, 
just now are kind of going, they're kind of getting used to the terms of some of these styles. And it's like, no, he didn't use Muay Thai for his elbows and stuff like that. But I can guarantee his stuff was just as practical as anything else. And just because of the fact that he is, his mindset, his mindset was made for that. His mindset was going for, we're not training in our, in our uniforms. We're not going to put on the old gi and put on the little belts or nothing. He didn't care about none of that. He just cared about, hey, let's get this, let's get you set up. Let's get you practical. And let's make sure that you can walk these streets. Um... So, I mean, that's what he did. So I, I thought that was pretty amazing, actually. I'm thinking, hey, that guy gets thumbs up for me because of the fact that his head, that's where his mindset was. Didn't matter what he knew, he just took what he did know, what he knew, and applied it correctly. You know what I mean? Um, so just so I'm going to put the link for a good place to go look at the history of it, stuff like that. Uh, maybe they'll have some videos or something. I'm not sure if they do or not, but... I'll put it up there so that way you guys can look at it. So Eric, if you want to, if you're interested to check it out, this you'll be able to read the actual history because it's too long for me to put in a video, uh, things like that. But it, it really has some interesting uh, applications, and I think that it has some has some merit. And I think if anything you can take away from it, it should be the mindset of it. Like it doesn't matter what you know as long as you're applying it with practicality. And I think that's one thing you should take with it. But I'll put the link in. You can check it out. And anybody who's interested, you can check it out. You know, look it up. Uh, another one, and then a friend of mine asked me, from Clyde Soret, he asked me to check out uh, uh, Pramek, uh, P-R-A-M-E-K, or, and, but it, and I, so I checked it out, and it actually stands for Practical Mechanic System, uh, because he's considering it, because they consider it a more scientific process to the martial arts, because he's going to go into showing you the leverages, the showing the angles, showing the mathematical properties of this thing, and it's, uh, you know he's based and he's based out of Atlanta, Georgia, I believe that's like the big main training center. And but then I you look in further to this guy Matt Powell, in which he's he seems really smart. He looks he sounds very intelligent, and his training ideas and ethos is really really smart. Um, but he is a but basically he's just taking Russian martial arts or Systema, a a, a variation. It's like uh, Katnikov. Systema, Ketnikov Systema, uh, which Ketnikov, I was looking at some of the videos of that too. Um, it, you know, it really vary. It really is different from some of the other Systema stuff. There are some similarities, but I would go with this side of it more than I would go with like Vladimir's. And the reason why is because of the 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 look of it is far more practical. Um, I think that he hits the nail on the head with his name of uh, Pramac or Practical Mechanic System. Because he's going to show you how, what the, like the leverages, the balances, the equilibriums. He's going to actually show you all this stuff in scientific terms, in mathematical terms. You know, basically he's going to break it down in a way that you guys can look at it and not be like, "Whoa, how did he do that? I don't think he'll ever get to that point." You know, because sometimes people that's what they market. They market how good they are and say, "Hey, you can get as good as me. Look at this." But they'll never show you how to get there because they really still need your money. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, man, just come on. Keep on coming to my $500 seminars and uh, you might get there one day, boy. Good job. And I mean, that's, you know, that's the kind of the mentality. Um, so I like these guys. I like what they show. Um, but really, is it's just Systema. Now, like I said, to me, it's a, it's a type of Systema that I would prefer. And even the... Uh, uh, Kachnikov uh, has the, the website. I'm going to put the website in there too. Um, you can get a free video and a free report from the Kachnikov system. And, man, people who say, here's some free stuff. I want you to look at it yourself. And then you come back to me and tell me. I'm already impressed with them. Because in my – and even even uh, Primac, he has on YouTube a free video. like an hour and like almost an hour and a half uh, ground uh, fight, uh, like the ground stuff video, dude. You just put a free thing on YouTube. That's amazing. I mean, I, I don't know. When people aren't afraid to hide what they know and the knowledge that they have, and they're willing to give you a free product for it and say, "Here you go. Uh, I want you to check this out," and then you guys come back and check us out. I already have a lot of respect for them. And it makes me want to actually work with those people more because of the fact that these guys are willing to say, hey, I'm not afraid, dude. You're either going to like us or you're not going to like us. 
You don't like us, you don't have to train with us, but there it was. There's the information for you. you. You don't like that information, then you don't have to use it. But if you like it, you'll train with us. And they're pretty, and they're pretty confident that you're going to like it. And I think that because of the fact that Russian martial arts is still kind of an enigma, there, it's a, there's a lot out there and there's a lot market, but I think there's a lot, a lot of stuff that's just crap. And there's a lot of things out there that, about it that a lot of people don't know, and that's why people are marketing on it so easily. Um, I prefer someone who's going to go out there and say, hey, uh, I, th this is how it's done. I'm going to show you the leverages. I'm going to show you how it's done. And, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, I'm not going to go on here and go, oh, hey, man. Whew. But it, I think that you're going to pick something up. And I think you could add it to your system. It does, I probably wouldn't even, I would even say, I would even be bold enough to say, you don't have to study this by itself. You could take what they show you and apply it to what you already know. And if you do that, it'll probably enhance your abilities rather than diminish them. Or it could help you understand something a little further than perhaps maybe you didn't know already. Or You know what I mean? I mean, it's just like, if you didn't know something, they could probably help break it down for you. And it's like, or you could probably look at it and go, okay, we were doing that. That's why that works. Because some people are still caught up in mysticism. People are still caught up in all this, you know, ooh, la, 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 flow, all this, that. Really, honestly, people will show, tell you, Anatomy-wise, uh, you know, biology-wise, all this stuff. How come certain things actually work in the human body? Um, do I believe in a spiritual context? Yes, I do. Of course, I do. But do I think that it you be hindered if you're not a Buddhist or a Taoist or a Shintoist or something like that that, that doesn't study certain things like that? Absolutely not. Um, I think uh, one of the reasons why you're going to see more of a scientific po point of view for Russia, you got to remember, Russia was a communist nation, and they were basically, they didn't believe it. That was an atheist nation. They didn't believe in any of that stuff. So they're going to give you a bigger scientific point of view, and they're going to give you this side of things from a more uh, practical, pragmatic thinking side than a, well, if you just hone with your spirit and then push it out. They're not going to go that route. They're going to show you, man, you just got to swing your arm a little bit and you just got to be more relaxed when you hit. And when you, uh, you know, when you have this whipping motion, it actually, when you hit hard, you, you know, you can get this whipping motion out going out with it. And it hurts like crazy. You know, why not if I go down with it rather than, you know, hitting straight on with them. And that's really good. And if you think about the body mechanics of Kung Fu and you think of body mechanics of just, you, you, there's some actual similarities that people will actually say and now they're going to say that we're totally different but everybody says we are totally different and believe it or not whether people think they're totally different or not they might be but it's not so much that they are as much as the fact that maybe their breakdown's better or maybe their thought pattern is more simplified and it's easier for them to you know for them to teach it and show it uh, it's it, but because it, believe it or not, I don't I don't believe there's anything new under the sun. I I don't believe that there's anything that we're gonna learn now that hasn't been already done like eons ago that maybe was never written down. I just don't believe that, and it's because of the fact that I, I just see too much similarities in everything. Uh, I, I see too many similarities in stories that are being told that are basically the same stories, but we're manipulating it a little bit. Now, does that mean it is the same story? No, not necessarily. They just probably like those types of stories, and they put their original sp their spin on it with different people, um, and it, it. So that's how it that's how it works a lot of times. So, I mean, that's how it is. I mean, and that's how it is with movies, books, um, and definitely in martial arts. Don't ever assume that you are the only person doing that. Okay, that's my little tidbit for all the grandmasters out there or the guys who are very talented and have reached that pinnacle and were by their peers shown, said, yes, you are absolutely well good enough to be um, a tenth don because you have shown that you have enough unique material that is outside of um, what other people are doing or outside what others are teaching. You're teaching something a little differently. I want you to understand what you know and what you've done is accumulated through things that you've learned. So, it's not that you're doing something different. You're just piecing it together differently, but it's still the same information that's out there. 
and don't think you're the only one in the universe that has ever thought of it that way. There's just some people out there who do not care about standing in front of a council, in front of their peers, and saying, hey, show me. We're just we're plenty happy with the fact that it, we go out there and we've had to fight with people. We've survived conflict after conflict. We've survived you know, battles. We've survived you know, sur- uh, street fights. We've survived uh, bar fights. We've survived stupid, uh, drunk cousins and best friends being stupid, and you just did certain things differently. You know, we've survived those things. And, you know, we've done our, like, we've done, like, mid-school competitions and stuff like that. Was it ever televised or with this big deal where you got a trophy? No. But, you know, we're pretty happy with the fact that we were able to smoke a lot of people. So don't think you're, like, the only ones out there doing anything unique. However, getting away from that, I want to give the shout-out to both for that, for Pramac, that it does give you something I think you should look at. I think people should look at um, Bartitsu is a good historical thing. You should look at it for mindset. Pragmatic is good for because of good education and possibly give you guys good insight on how to hit properly. You probably learn how to relax a little bit because there's some people that don't teach certain things and these are good, this, I think this is a good route to go if to add on. Not so much to only, but if you don't have anything, you, might, you, might, you could probably go this way and you'd probably be all right. You'd probably be, it'd probably be a good, safe route because it will give you all the what you need. Um, now I'm going to move into my friend, uh, George Johnston. Uh, George Johnston, he, he lives in Glasgow, Scotland. Now, Glasgow is not like your normal place. I looked this up. It's actually a very rough neighbor. It's a very tough, tough area in Scotland. I didn't realize how bad it was. And so I realized that his stuff has to either be very, very practical or people are just, you're not going to do well. Now, you got to understand something. His system is, it's called Total Fight, con- it's Total total Combat Fight System, Fighting System or, or Fight System. Uh, I told, you know, TCFS. I thought it was always interesting because mine is TFS, his is TCFS. I was like, hey, <laughs> we're, we're on the same, we're on the same uh, package here, except for his name, totally different. So it's Total Combat Fighting System. And George is like, he's an old school guy, man. I mean, he comes from a good lineage of instructors, okay? Now, he was part of the KC team, about the, the K, uh, KC fighting method team, before the breakups, before all that stuff. He was a part of the, like the original people, like when he first started out, when they were building up. He was a part of that, and then uh, then he broke off because he wanted to do something else. He, he didn't like where it was going, and so he wanted to kind of do his own thing. So he was like, he, he broke away from them like before any of this. Um, and he just kind of said, okay, I want to do my own thing. And they were like, okay, go for it. So he did. So he went in there. And so he's got hybrid fighting, uh, hybrid fighting academy. Uh, and now he's out there and he's, and it teaches. He, and what, what's great about what George did and I think in his, in, uh, Mandy, uh, Bari, what they did in the beginning. And I think, and he still does. Is he took what he he learned, which was Casey fighting method, but he's also but he also is a Taekwondo guy, so he took his Taekwondo methods, Casey fighting methods, uh, the uh, Silat Kali, uh, Jun Van uh, Jun Van Kung Fu or Jikun Do, but from Inasano and stuff like that. So he took all those elements and he continues to bring in elements, and they have a saying is anything is usable. If taught right, if taught correctly, anything can be used, and so they basically quit thinking right away that that there was nothing out there that you could ever use in any system. Uh, the guy's extraordinarily talented, and he goes out there and he shows his stuff. And there's so many things that he puts on. He puts things on YouTube and on uh, Facebook, and it says, "Here's a little drill. It's a basic drill, and it's like so many pieces of <laughs> of what they're." doing and you know what's so funny about it is there's so much happening in that small basic drill that you kind of go whoa how is that basic and I like to quote Doug Marcada on this because Doug Marcada one I find him extraordinary anyway he goes he says honestly it's because of how you're training I train this certain way to make my complicated very, uh, my complicated becomes gross motor skills. He says, and the reason why, he says, that's the difference. 
some people's gross motor skills are just gross motor skills because they'll never train with anything complicated. He goes, but my complicated becomes gross motor skills because I'm training them all the time. And I'm putting it under stress. I'm putting it under the... And the guy's not, it's not like he's a slouch. You know, he's a combat, he, he's a, he's a former military guy. He's a, uh, he's a medical practitioner. I'm not sure what he is. I mean, he's a doctor of some kind, but uh, he's in the medicine field. I know that. Um, and he trains law enforcement. He trains military personnel. He trains federal agency, agency guys, and they all use it with great effectiveness. And it's because he, even though he breaks it down, he, even though he knows that it's complicated stuff, you drill it, and you drill it, and you drill it, and you drill it, okay? So it's not so much, but it's not just drill it. It's like the training, the mindset to kind of overcome this. And your goal is to get to this one side and to always, and you, you're working those skill sets all the time. Well, that's the same thing that uh, George does. You're going to be working these skill sets, and even though it seems like it could be, you know, very complicated, eventually, it becomes so second nature that it's like someone throws a punch and you're just kind of like, mm, mm, and you're just going to work into whatever flow. And it doesn't matter what the technique is because you don't really have a technique. You're just flowing in from one move into another move until the person's on the floor and, and not moving. And see, that's where a lot of, a lot of great teachers, and I would take that from E.W. Barton, I take that from, even from Matt Powell, who does, how he does pra, uh, Pramac, and George Johnson, how all three of these guys do it in a different way. It's not technique-wise as much as it is, let's, you know, let's worry about protecting ourselves, getting away from the danger, uh, protecting ourselves, protecting ourselves from the danger, which means you can evade it, you can move away from it, uh, you can block it, you can cover yourself, whatever it is to protect yourself, but you're advancing you're advancing. That's what some of these some of these great systems have. You're going to be advancing at the same time. And no matter how they show you how to do it, I'm telling you right now, they all have similar principles. They're all going into an angle. They're all going, they're going to be doing an angle of evasion as well as an angle of attack. Same time. Because not only is it here and here, it's not just, you know, here and here. They're going in with offensive mindset. They're not going, I gotta just continue to protect myself. It's mm -mm, I'm gonna block you in, but I'm gonna dram I'm gonna ram you with my elbow. Uh, they have a wedge thing, uh, that's what I was watching for Primac. Uh, they have this wedge concept, and it's just like you get to the wedge and you basically open the guy up, and now you're on that side of him, and you can do whatever you want to him. You know what I mean? Same thing with Bartitsu. It wasn't so much of, hey, you know, you know, leave me alone. It's he's like, man, take your snuff box, you know pop them in the head, you know what I mean? Break, you know, kick their foot, you know, kick their leg out with the, with Savat, and as you do that, you come in, kick that leg, and then you come over and you throw them on the floor. Um, and then choke them out. So it's like, there is such a practicality to the mindset, and all three of these have the mindset that I think everyone needs for good practical self-defense. And I use, I'm gonna, let me explain something real quick. Self-defense, I use the term self-defense because more people understand what self-defense is. If I start giving off some sort of spouting off combative self-protection, blah, 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 this, blah, blah, that. You know, people only in the martial arts world even know about that. I'm trying to appeal to a lot of different people, not just those guys who think they know what they're talking about. I'm actually going to go out here and I'm trying to appeal to a lot of people. Um, and it's because I want people to understand, you know, the truth in martial arts. These three thing, these three people here, and I'm going to put the website for each of these on here, and that way people can check them out themselves and stuff like that. That way, if they're looking for a self defense thing, if they're if they're in Glasgow, uh, Scotland, um, they can even look up schools that are uh, part of TCFS. They can look up if it's in Bristol. You know, there's I think there's a school in Bristol. There's a so there. There's people who are training it and are instructors, so you can go and check this out. You can look it up, um, and I'm going to put the Bartitsu thing in there, so that way you guys can sit, check that out, how to learn it, how to study it. I'm going to put the Pragmac in there for the same reasons. That way you guys can look this up yourselves, okay? Uh, that way if you don't have a school, or perhaps they're not offering you anything like this, you have the option now. 
Okay, but those are my three shout outs. Prime Mac, good, uh, solid scientific background. Um, I think it has a good, solid foundation uh, scientifically. And I like the way their approach. I like the approach of it. I'll have to, I'd have to work with it more to say yay or nay. Um, okay, I'm not a big fan of Systema as it is, but I like the way that this one looks and the way it approaches things. Uh, Bartitsu, historically, it's a good historic art and it does things already that other systems are out there doing right now. But it's a good it's a good way to look at it, to a good historical thing to look at, and perhaps to kind of get an understanding of what he did and why he did it. Okay, uh, so look at it that from that point point of view, uh, but that way you can also kind of see that maybe you're already doing something similar. Um, and then of course total fight uh, total combat fighting system or TCFS with George Johnston. Um, if you're in the Glasgow Scotland area or you can look up his schools. You know, you can see that, you know, this he has a, looks complicated, but it really will become second nature if you just train it and drill it. I'm, he's not a stupid man. He's a great man, actually. Um, he's actually the only instructor I know personally out of this list. And George is a great guy, okay? He, he just really is a supreme instructor and individual and human being. So... Uh, look him up and look it up and check it out, man. I'm, I, I, I totally say it. if you want to get him to the U.S., get him to the U.S. Get a seminar going to the U.S. Because, you know, get more people exposed to, to his, his style of doing things, man. So I'm going to leave the links below. And you guys can continue to comment and give me questions and topics and all sorts of fun things. You can get me at Twitter, at TFS Michael Reese. Um, you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on, you know, you can find me on all the different areas, um, but I just don't do Instagram, okay? It's just not my thing. But at the same time, I'm going to leave the links to my Facebook and my Twitter account, and I'm going to leave the links even to my group on Facebook and the, my Freestyle freestyle Warriors uh, martial arts uh, page. Okay, and then you guys can still hook me up, hook up with me on there, so that way we can continue to walk, uh, walk this path and talk about martial arts truthfully, because there's a lot of things out there, guys, and some of this stuff is just plain garbage. So let's keep talking truthfully, and let's continue to walk it together. All right, I'll talk to y'all later.